Hey, I'm Beth from My Tutoring Bee, and this is my first video in my Summer of Geometry series. So we are going to be learning about a lot of different skills with geometry in this series, and I figured what better way to start it off than to go over some common geometric figures, symbols, and notation. So let's get started. So today we are going to be talking about the term, so the vocabulary term. We are going to look at what the figure figure itself looks like. Figure, there we go. Uh, we are going to be looking at the symbol, so how you would write it, and also how you would say each of these when talking about it. Okay, so the first term that we're going to talk about is a point. So our point, the figure just simply looks like this. It is a point. It is usually usually labeled with some letter. And so our symbol for this is actually just going to be the letter itself. And then we would say point B. Pretty straightforward. All right, the next thing that we're going to talk about is a line. And the figure for that is a line with two arrows on each side. Typically, a line will have some amount of points labeled such as this one will have A and C labeled. And so for our symbol, we would need to take two of those points and label it with the uh, arrow symbol, the line with the arrows up on top. So that would be how to write it when you are talking about or writing about the line AC. And then you would say it just like that, line AC. Okay, the line can sometimes be confused with the line segment. And so if we think about the word segment, that just means a little piece. So with a line segment, we would have what looks like a line, but it has two endpoints on it. So it's cut off. In the line, the arrows indicate that this figure is going on in both directions indefinitely. With a line segment, it's cut off right here and right here. So a lot of times these are, again, labeled with letters. And so, so for our symbol, we would label this with DE with just a straight line on the top. And that tells us that is, it is a line segment. And you can see the difference between a line and a line segment. That's something that I see a lot of my students get confused um, when we're first starting off talking about geometric figures. And so we would call this line segment DC. Okay. The next thing that I, I would like to talk about is array. Array is sort of the combination of the line and line segment. It has an endpoint and then it goes on in a direction indefinitely, just like a ray of sunshine is a lot of times what I, what I say to my students to help them remember what a ray uh, means and what it looks like. So it has one endpoint and one arrow. So again, if we want to use this as a symbol, we would need to pick two points along that ray. And when we are writing the symbol for the ray, we always want this to be the first point that we use in our notation here. So we know that it starts at F and then it rays out to point through point G and G is just another point somewhere along the ray. Um, and so just like we have the line and line segment, we need something on top here. And so that's just going to have a line with one arrowhead. And so we would call this ray FG. The next thing that we're going to look at is a plane. So a plane is typically symbolized, we see this as a um, parallelogram, right? And all that a plane means is just a, a thin slice through whatever figure we're talking about uh, when we're talking about, let's say, like a solid figure, right? So, for example, I have this little coaster here that's sort of a, a very flat rectangular prism. If I were to slice right through this, through the middle, that would be a plane on in the middle of this solid figure. So that's why it is uh, typically drawn with this parallelogram. And there might be some point that's labeled just within the plane somewhere. 
And so the plane doesn't necessarily have a symbol. We would just say plane H. And so again, plane H is how that would be said out loud. The next thing that we're going to look at is an angle. And so an angle ha is comprised of two rays. So they have this point here where they begin and then they're going to extend out in, in each of those directions indefinitely. And then of course we would need to have some points labeled on here. Let's just keep with our alphabet theme here, I, J, K. And so we would, the symbol for this would be angle I, J, K, or we could say angle K, J, I. Now notice that the J point is in the middle of my notation here both times. And that's because the J is actually where those two endpoints meet. So whatever that point is, that letter needs to always be in the middle of your notation and the other two can be on either side. So you're reading it like this, I, J, K in this direction, or you might be going the other direction and say K, J, I in this direction, uh, but it needs to follow in that pattern. And then just like I've been saying this whole time, we just say angle, I, J, K, or angle K, J, I. Simple as that. Something else that we want to notate with angles a lot of the times is their measurement. So let's say that we are given the measurement of this angle, it is 40 degrees. So we would say the measurement of angle J equals 40 degrees. And that's how we would notate that in order, we just use a little M for to abbreviate for measurement. Also, I just used an angle J for this notation instead of using all three letters. That is also an okay symbol, an okay way to notate an angle if that is the only angle that is present in the figure. If sometimes there are multiple angles that are together. So if that's the case, you'll want to use the three letters to pinpoint exactly which angle you're talking about. And so then of course over here, how you would say that is just the measure of angle J, 40 degrees. So let's take a look at some other figures and terms. So again, we're going to talk about the term. We're gonna look at what a figure of that looks like. And then we're also going to look at the symbol. So the first term that we want to look at is parallel. So when we're talking about parallel lines, we're talking about two lines that never intersect. Think of railroad tracks. They stay the same width apart the entire time. They never get closer or further apart from each other. They're straight lines. And again, they, they never touch, they never intersect. And the symbol for that, we just simply mark basically two parallel lines right there. And a lot of times another notation that I want to point out is that when you see two parallel lines in a figure, a lot of times you will see little arrows indicating that they are parallel. And so if they have the same amount of arrows, then what's trying to be indicated there is that these two lines are parallel to each other. So if we had a second set of parallel lines, then these two might have a different indication like that to show that these two are parallel with each other and these two are parallel with each other and uh, they're not parallel with the other set of parallel lines. Okay, so let's take a look at perpendicular lines. So perpendicular lines meet at a 90 degree angle it can either be an angle like this, and a lot of times we see a little box here in the corner indicating that that's a 90 degree angle, but parallel, sorry, but perpendicular lines can also just cross each other like this and still create that 90 degree angle. It can also be rotated. So you may see it in some other orientation like this. But they are still, as long as they have that 90 degree angle, they're still perpendicular. 
And so the symbol for that is kind of an upside down capital T. Okay, and the last term that I want to talk about that has a figure that we uh, can, can actually draw here is a triangle. So we, I think we all will know what a triangle is. It is a three-sided figure. And so for the symbol for that, we simply write a little small triangle and then list the letters that are uh, the points that are on the vertices of that triangle. So we would call this triangle LMN. Some other symbols that I wanted to make sure to go over. So we'll look at the term and the symbol and the meaning. All right, so the, the first term that I wanna talk about is congruent. And you'll see this symbol with an equal sign with a little squiggly line up above. So this symbol means that one figure is congruent to another figure. And all that that means is that they are the same size and same shape. So for example, if I had two triangles that I want to be congruent, then they have to be the same size and the same shape, the same type of triangle, basically exactly the same. They have to both match each other. Another term that we can talk about is the ter term similar. So a lot of times we'll see just a squiggly line to show to indicate that two two figures are similar to one another. So what similar means is that it is the same shape, but it's not necessarily the same size. However, it does need to be proportional. So if I'm using my triangles again as an example, I have this triangle here and then a slightly larger triangle Perhaps this is an equilateral triangle. I know I just I just sort of hand drew this, but we're going to say that this is a 60 degree angle, this is a 60 degree angle, and this is also a 60 degree angle. So in my larger triangle, even though it is larger, the, the lengths of the sides are longer, the angles are still the same. This would be a 60, 60, and 60. Also, when I say proportional, that means the sides of the, of the triangles have to be proportional. So if this side is, let's say, two centimeters, let me write that a little bit more clear, two centimeters, then this side might be four centimeters. So it's just a times two proportion. So if this one is two centimeters, then this one also has to be four centimeters. So you see how these are all proportionate to each other. We can just take one of these sides, multiply times two, and we find the length of the sides of the other figure. Okay, and the last term that we're going to talk about is approximately. So this symbol is kind of like a squiggly equal sign, so you can see how similar and different all of these different symbols are. And the meaning is pretty self-explanatory, but it just means about. So let's say that we are calculating something and we get a, a decimal that is a very long, non-repeating decimal that you have to um, round. And, and so you're asked to round to the nearest tenth or round to the nearest hundredth. So let's round to the ne nearest tenth about for this number. This number is approximately 2.4. So we're leaving off a lot of information about this number, but it's close enough so we just say that it is approximate. I hope that is a helpful intro to some geometric figures, symbols, and notation. We're going to be using a lot of these in this series, so always refer back to this if you need some more help. See you next time.